Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about the food poisoning. Now we have seen uh, the different bacteria and their use uh, and, and their importance clinically to cause diseases, right? Now in this case, we'll be compiling all those different bacteria and we are going to see what are those bacteria which are causing food poisoning, what are the bacteria causing gastrointestinal diseases and causing the uh, urinary tract diseases and all these infections. Now for the food poisoning part, there are major four type of bacteria that are causing this kind of food poisoning. Okay. So depending upon the degree of uh, causing these diseases, we can divide them in several groups, right? So so let me talk about it. So let let us place a graph here. Let us place sorry, let's place a graph. So here, if I draw this graph, we are going to find that the most uh, common uh, organism which is causing the food poisoning in United States. So whatever we are dealing with here throughout this place uh, is of United States so let, let us talk about so let's say this one this one is for say Campylobacter so the major kind of individual uh, organism that is causing the food poisoning is Campylobacter Campylobacter species okay so Campylobacter species is there uh, after that uh, the another important uh, organism that can cause this disease and that is Salmonella species so it is very very kind of so this is Salmonella species, Salmonella, Salmonella species, especially Salmonella enterica or Salmonella typhimurium, both of them, Enteritis and Salmonella typhimurium, both of them, right? Now third uh, important organism that can cause disease in this case, uh, the food poisoning uh, conditions is Shigella, but it is a kind of half of Campylobacter, so it's Shigella, so let me, it is Shigella, okay, and Shigella species, and the fourth one is Clostridium. Remember, we have uh, just talked about Clostridium. So the fourth one is Clostridium. So this is Clostridium, Clostridium species. Okay, so these are the major food uh, food in poisoning causing agents right and if we look at the percentage value of that so why i am uh, providing it like that because because if we look at the percentage value starts are ranging from zero and then definitely this is going to be a kind of five this is kind of 10 it's kind of 15 like that okay so this is uh, the percent so this is called the incidence the percent of incidence for for food poisoning right so this this x axis is denoting percentage of food poisoning food poisoning witnessed okay and this is the number of uh, the type of individual organism okay so these are the four major category and among all of them we have already talked about campylobacter uh, we have talked about salmonella and clostridium majorly except for that campylobacter shigella is also there we haven't talked about them uh, detailly but still in this case we'll be talking a little bit about them and what are the reasons for causing those diseases uh, in a very very brief amount the first one is the campylobacter jejun uh, species and among the campylobacter species campylobacter jejunine Jejunine is or jejuni is this uh, serotype of Campylobacter that is causing the disease, right? Now this Campylobacter jejuni can cause the disease. Actually, the the way or the symptoms of the disease is, and usually they cause the disease in 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 uh, small intestine. So in small intestine, small intestinal. Uh, poisoning and the food poisoning uh, can be occurred or, or this bacteria enters via oral fecal root right so via sorry so via oral fecal root that means again the poisoning is done in food and when the food is eaten and in those cases that that particular bacteria enters into your body and it definitely if, if it is a kind of food poisoning it is going to infect your gastrointestinal lining and gastrointestinal tract now in this case also it is infecting the small intestine and this bacteria start to colonize in small intestine and sooner what they will produce here in jejunum ileum so these are the regions right now in this jejunum and ileum all these regions it is causing a kind of localized inflammative lesion so let me write it, it will cause 
it will cause inflammative lesion so inflammation right inflammative lesions lesions are developed there okay and in those case they are colonized there actually inside this inflammative lesions there is colonization of the bacteria right so that's a very important point okay this is by the Campylobacter species and this Campylobacter is again lead to and among all of these different bacterial infection finally leads to diarrhea headache uh, nausea vomiting abdominal cramp save and all these things and so we'll be talking I'm not talking about those things anymore now this is the actual thing about the Campylobacter jejunum now the second kind are the salmonella species now the salmonella species here they are they, the, the, the two different serotypes of salmonella can cause this kind of food, spoil, food poisoning. One is salmonella typhimurium, another one is the salmonella enteritis. So let me write salmonella typhimurium. So here, salmonella typhimurium and salmonella enteritis. Enteritis, both of them can cause this kind of food poisoning right and the effect of this salmonella poisoning is again in intestine obviously in the intestine and they can cause this kind of disease by secreting a kind of enterotoxin enterotoxin and we know that these enterotoxins are a type of exotoxin right now this exotoxin is going to cause massive diarrhea bloody diarrhea rapid water loss from body and obviously, uh, it will be related with the abdominal cramp, vomiting, di uh, headache, nausea and all these things because these are the common symptoms all these cases, right? Now, more importantly is that the salmonella species, this kind of organism usually found in unprocessed food or uncooked kind of food, which is a poultry or egg. So, that is a very important point. So, it, these are found, so let me write, found in, in poultry, poultry meat. And egg right so we need to be very careful about choosing this poultry meat and egg if it is contaminating this meat and egg in those cases it can be uh, colonized inside our body from this meat uncooked kind of meat and egg right because many people nowadays also uh, eat egg and uh, eat egg as a kind of half pose away and all this case which is a uh, not properly cooked egg right so we need to be very careful about these parts, right? So uncooked food, eating uncooked food is definitely is a very alarming situation for all, all the time, all kind of food. So you should cook the food properly, then eat it, right? Now the third kind is the Shigella species, right? So Shigella. So let me talk about Shigella here. Now Shigella is again another kind of enteric bacteria, right? Shigella is another kind of enteric bacteria and the Shigella species locally uh, they present in our large intestine so that's the difference between Shigella presence of Shigella and the presence of this Campylobacter Campylobacter present in small intestine or colonized but Shigella usually colonize in Shigella usually colonize in large intestine so let me talk about it here it colonize in large intestine and what it does actually, it colonizes in the intestinal mucosa, especially in intestinal mucosa. So, intestinal mucosa. And this sigilla is also secreting a kind of exotoxin or kind of enterotoxin, right? So, let me write. It will also produce kind of enterotoxin. Now, this enterotoxin is eventually going to damage this intestinal mucosa as a result of that it will release some blood with stool now this condition blood with stool we usually result it as bloody diarrhea right so it's a bloody diarrhea it usually causes this bloody diarrhea okay and also uh, diarrhea means water loss dehydration always take place in all this case uh, but the shigella is uh, shigella is again uh, the, the strain of shigella which is causing all this disease i forgot to mention and that is actually called as shigella dysentery so shigella shigella dysentery now this is a very common uh, kind of disease. This dysentery is very common. Bacterial dysentery is very very common kind of disease. Now, usually it take it took uh, almost five to seven days 
uh, for the total recovery from this disease. So actually, it's a long procedure. Five to seven days will be taken, or let's say not five, three to seven days uh, will be taken for the recovery of this disease by Shigella. Right? It's also called as Shigellosis. And the fourth one is Clostridium species. The Clostridium species, you know, this is a slightly kind of different than previous three because this Clostridium species is a kind of anaerobic type of type of microorganisms usually found in soil. And if it is in direct contact with us, with our with our blood circulation system via kind of wound or a kind of food infection through the intestinal wall, it can move. And in this th those cases, it can contaminate us. It can it can spread the disease. Now among uh, many type of Clostridium species, major two types of species that are causing the disease. One is the Clostridium perfringens. So let me write it here. Clostridium perfringens. Here, let's say let's let's take take a new color. So let's say here. Clostridium, so not class. Clostridium, Clostridium perfringens, perfringens, and the second one is Clostridium botulinum, right? And the most important part about this Clostridium species is that they are, they are capable of producing massive kind of toxins. For example, Clostridium perfringens is uh, more common. Uh, causative agent for food poisoning and they poise this food using a kind of exotoxin and they are having several different types of exotoxin with them they are having uh, they are having a variety of exotoxins inside so they will start secreting those exotoxins and if these exotoxins reach our bloodstream if they somehow reach our bloodstream in those cases it will cause D -d diseases or disease symptoms okay now a botulinum can also produce a toxin which is the most potent toxin known to human being uh, till now it is called the botulinum toxin botulinum toxin now this botulinum toxins can also act similarly as uh, so the, the mechanism activity is slightly different but it will result in a flaccid paralysis after that right now this kind of clostridium uh, kind of poisoning of, of food is rare but if it is uh, occurred in those cases it could be life threatening now rest of the other food poisoning that we can see this could be milder but this is a very very dangerous then among all these different food poisoning it ultimately results in diarrhea abdominal crab severe pain pain and all these things migraine headache and all these things right and usually all of them in fact maximum of them will be cured on its own they are self limiting kind right so let me write they are a kind of self limiting infections Except for the botulinum toxin poisoning and all these things. Okay, uh, so self-limiting kind of infection. But we, so so in those cases we don't require to administer antibiotic. But if uh, the condition is severe, more severe, in those cases we may take antibiotic to reduce uh, the effect of the disease, right? To get rid of those microorganisms which are causing the disease, right? So that's about the food poisoning, and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.